Turning now from sexual reproduction of plants um, through genetics, we now look at asexual and non-sexual plant propagation. We're making new plants of old. This is a pretty practical uh, unit, and I think you might like it. Plants can be propagated or grown from seeds, of course, but they also can be grown from different parts of mother plants. The plants are made from cuttings of older plants. This is called asexual reproduction. Garlic is an example of a plant that makes new plants from old. To grow garlic, all you need to do is break a bulb into its individual clothes and plant the clothes in the late fall, usually about four to six inches deep, depending on the soil type. Heavier soils, you want to plant a bit more shallow. In the spring, green leaves will appear and grow and create entire new garlic bulbs by late July when they're harvested. This is asexual reproduction or plants pro producing plants from other plants. Even large redwood trees can produce new trees vegetatively. Notice the baby redwoods at the base of the mother trees. They come up from sprouts that begin in the roots of the large tree. Mother nature often uses vegetative reproduction to produce new plants. Here's a runner producing new grass plants. Notice the drive of the non-green stem connecting each of the plants as it moves across the sand. Can you tell by the size of the individuals, individual plants, which way this plant is moving? Taking parts of mother plants to produce new plants is a common practice on farms and gardens. This practice ensures that the new plants are exactly the same as the old. The downside is that it does not increase genetic diversity. Here's a cutting from a, a, a fig tree on the left here and from a snake plant on the right. Notice the, the wounded areas right where the, where the plant is cut produces callus materials and new roots grow, growing out of it. Remember that plant meristems are omnipotent. That is, they have the ability to produce new tissues. Each of the red dots in the diagram on the right show areas where meristems may exist in this plant. They're generally good locations to take new cuttings. At each of these meristems, the, the plant, the cells will begin to divide and enlarge and produce new growth. In these meristematic regions, there's lots of cell division. Cell division is a process where one cell makes two and on and on. The daughter cells are exactly like the, the, the larger, the mother cell. All of this meristematic activity happens quite naturally after a plant is wounded. The wound actually stimulates this activity, causing doubling of the new cells, followed by differentiation of cells into specialized root cells in this case. The activity is encouraged by the application of auxin. <laughs> Remember auxin? We call this process taking cuttings from old plants to make new ones. The same process can happen under controlled laboratory conditions. A few cells from the meristem of a plant can be extracted and put in the test tubes with specialized hormones. These cells divide for a while and then form specialized tissues such as stems, leaves, and root tissues, making new plants from just a few cells of the old plant. The proper mix of nutrients and hormones are needed to instruct the dividing cells how to grow. Tissue culture is used to produce thousands of plants from just a few cells of the mother plant. This is an advanced version of taking cuttings. Asexual propagation allows gardeners to produce plants faster, especially in cases where seeds are difficult to germinate. One of the most important benefits of asexual pr propagation is that plants produced are genetically identical to the parent plant. Therefore, they have the same traits as the parent plant. This type of plant is known as a clone. In some cases, it can also be more economical to produce plants asexually rather than through seeds. Cuttings are classified as stem cuttings, leaf cuttings, 
leaf bud cuttings, and in some cases root cuttings. These are the easiest ways to produce plants from new plants from old. Hardwood or tree cuttings are generally more difficult than, than soft leaf cuttings. Softer tissue is easier to get to get rooted. Softwood cuttings of shrubs, for example, are easier to, to root. Segments of four to six inches are generally cut. Lower the leaves are generally are often pulled off and, and rooting hormone will be applied at the base where, where, the, where the cut occurs. Since the new cutting has no root system, keeping the plants in a high humidity environment is really important. Leaf cuttings consist of a leaf blade or a leaf blade with a petiole sometimes attached to it. Leaf cuttings are used when the plant material is, when plant material is scarce and large numbers of new plants are needed fast. House plants or foliage plants are often propagated this way. Snake plants, begonias, African violets, for example. You don't really need a lot of specialized equipment. Here's an easy way to get started. A couple of pots, you know, one of them clay, one of them plastic is fine. Some vermiculite or some pot or some light soil, uh, a paper towel, and a cork. Let's show you how, what we're going to do with these. Vermiculite is a light rooting medium that both holds moisture and air. It's available in most garden centers. It's not too expensive. We'll begin by putting the paper towel at the bottom of the plastic pot. If you don't do this, the vermiculite will kind of wash out the hole in the bottom. Next, we're going to pour the vermiculite into the pot, almost to the top. You can also use clean, sterile sand if you'd like. Next, we plug the bottom of the clay pot. It needs to be clay because water will move through the clay. Then push the clay pot into the center of the vermiculite. Make sure the clay pot sticks out a little bit just above the vermiculite. Next, you water the vermiculite thoroughly. Then you fill the clay pot with water. Now you know why the pot must be clay. It has to leak water through the sides of the clay to keep the vermiculite moist, but not too moist. And finally, you're ready to stick some cuttings. Remember that the hardwood stems or sticks don't root very well. I'd stick with the soft herbaceous stems first. Make a clean cut slightly below where the node is. That's where the petiole and the stem are connected. And push the cutting into the vermiculite. Try to keep the leaves from touching the vermiculite because you don't want them to rot. Rutone, or there's another material called homoden, are common products used to root cuttings. There's an auxin that put on the cut end of the, of the leaf and causes roots to be stimulated to grow. I'm sure you remember auxins from our plant physiology section of the class. Rooting hormones promote the development of new roots. They're used to increase the percentage of cuttings that actually take root and are successful. The cuttings of some plants root easily and may not need a hormone. However, even these plants will root more quickly and uniformly if they're treated with hormodin or rutone. The hormones apply to the base of the cuttings. They can be powders or sometimes they're liquids. You only need a very small amount because if you use too much, it may cause the stem to rot and prevent root, root formation.
It's often a good idea to remove those, some of the lower leaves from the cutting so they don't touch the vermiculite. Try lots of different types of cuttings from leaves and stems. A 50% success rate is not bad. A good plant to begin with is the African violet. It's relatively easy to get a new cutting, a new plant from the leaf and a petiole of the African violet plant. Unlike other leaves, you actually bury the petiole and a little bit of the base of the African violet plant. Roots will come out all along the bottom of this, of this, of this leaf. The watermelon peperomia is another relatively easy leaf to, to, to root. For the peperomia, the leaf is actually partially buried. The leaf will begin to die, but new roots and shoots will spring up from where it's connected, where it's touching the vermiculite. Leaf cuttings are a little bit more difficult. It's kind of a race between the old dying leaf and the new plant. You can expect about a 30% success rate with leaf cuttings. Snake plants are really easy. You can cut many two inch sections of this snake plant to stick into the vermiculite. Since your cutting will have no root system, it's important to keep a high humidity environment and keep the plant out of direct sunlight so it doesn't dry out. Many different kinds of meat, growing mediums can be used. Vermiculite is excellent. Sand can be used, perlite. Uh, anything that has, uh, has good, good aeration doesn't get too wet. Here's a few growing mediums that are used. I like vermiculite because it's sterile and has high good moisture retention as well as good aeration. If you have your own houseplants, you're gonna to wanna to make new plants from old to give your family and friends. Other plants you can propagate using stems. Remember that potato is an underground stem. And if you cut the potato, make sure there's an eye in each section, you can propagate the, uh, the potato. Some plants have rhizomes, underground stems that grow on, that, that, that you can use for propagation. And strawberries have runners that are grow above ground that you can, you can cut off and make new plants out of. Raspberries can be tip layered. Just bend a branch down and bury part of an older branch under the soil. Hold it down in the soil, maybe with a small stone. Once it starts to grow on its own, you can cut it off and you've got a new plant. This tip layering in which the vegetative part of the plant remains connected to the mother plant while it's developing new roots and shoots. It's easily done with raspberries and blackberries, for example. It might be useful to make a small cut at the bottom of the stem where it's under the, under the soil. This creates a wound. And remember where wounds form is callus formation and new meristematic activity. Roots start to grow out of that meristem. Once the new plant starts to root and you get a little bit of shoot growth, you can cut this plant off and move it to another part of the garden. In summer, asexual reproduction is a way of propagating plants from old plants. Cuttings are the most popular form and cuttings are treated with a rooting hormone quite often to make, help the roots grow. The environment's really important, high humidity, low light, and a, a light soil that's not too wet. 